Well, thank you so much. I'll uh, get this together here. Um, what you see, what you should see in front of you right away is uh, a wonderful uh, graphic of the concept of social capital. Uh, social capital is, as many of you may know, is one of, it's, it, of what has existed for a while as a model of holistic uh, uh, security and attention to the things that are most important to us, social capital, capital, economic capital, and environmental capital. Uh, environmental and economic, I would propose, are a bit uh, easier to define and measure than social capital often is. And, and you know, it falls into technical areas rapidly and for better or worse, um, various entities do their best to define what's going on within the environmental and, and uh, economic areas. Social capital is, I think, a, a more difficult thing to uh, really imagine how it really works and to be aware of when it's happening appropriately and uh, what, it, what it really is. So this model is a good complex integration of the variety of things that exist within a healthy social and other aspects environment. Uh, and you can see it has all kinds of uh, aspects that we would be familiar with. Um, this is designed, I, and I apologize, I do not know who made this, perhaps Michelle can give her credit, but it's a graduate student at Montana U University. I wanna speak really briefly about a couple of things specific in this model, and they are uh, at a much more intimate level the way that social capital is developed throughout just interpersonal, very intimate, I would say, local community uh, relationships. Because without that development of trust or some confidence in being able to work together through the lenses or the voices of, of very diverse aspects or people within our communities, none of these other uh, pieces which are significant and substantial would be really developed. And so I'll skip to the next slide here, if I may. Oops. To say that um, in developing social capital through um, developing confidence in each other, we have to recognize, I believe, that conflict is not something to objectify and make into something more polarized than it may already be. But we should look at conflict as being something that's inherent to our everyday experience. We continuously are navigating our ways through small aspects or small levels of, of conflict, and then often are confronted with larger aspects of it. Um, and yet it is something that we should, I, I would suggest that we move into as a part of a flowing kind of phenomenon of sharing energy with lots of diverse aspects uh, in a complex kind of field of awareness and alertness to various kinds of information and not find ourselves into an antagonistic relationships because of, I think, mischaracterizing our relationship with conflict. Uh, clearly, we have lots of conflict to deal with, um, or there, these areas, I should say, are areas where conflict is inherently involved. Uh, Kathy, of course, you know, in her wonderful presentation, uh, spoke about climate change, and of course, we'll have conflict around that. We know it. I've just brought up a few other pieces, the environmental protection aspects, wildlife and predators. In our ranching world, we've been very much in uh, conversations around how to have wildlife friendly or predator friendly uh, agricultural practices. Property use and planning, uh, very recently and in an ongoing fashion, the, the fairly contentious, I would say, but also enlightening in terms of different people's perspectives, the conversations around so-called zoning um, and conflict mitigation 
shed a light on that conflict. And then of course, I hate to even raise this point, but um, in the background of all that I would suggest is the role of government. And so we, in regard to those critical areas, we know we will have conflict. And so some of the questions are how do we navigate it and how do we manage it as effectively as we can. So this uh, slide of managing conflict by removing barriers, this uh, terminology is taken from a person I've paid close attention to, a guy named Adam Kahane, international uh, collaboration conflict mitigation person who's been involved in national level um, conflict uh, mitigation work. Um, so basically his position is that the primary function or the primary aspect of removing barriers is to open the field of conversation to all the people that are interested in what that conversation is about. And we could expect in Park County, certainly, and in other areas, many, many people who are paying attention, most, if not all of the people who are paying attention are the interested parties. And so the danger on the counterpoint of this is to have uh, a, to, to see the critical conversations as occurring between a relatively small group of people, perhaps people in power and influence, when in fact, uh, many, many others need to be at the table in some kind of way. So by removing the barriers, we do it through uh, providing lots of information, never can there be enough, recognizing communication as absolutely the core of managing diverse voices and working through evolving uh, the shared kind of understandings of diverse voices. Conversations that can take on a number of different kinds of uh, characteristics leading from or beginning with, let's say, very self-centered, highly uh, self-interested conversations with disregard for others to at the other end of that spectrum to highly in integrated or inclusive conversations in which all or most of the other voices are listened to with true genuineness and are, are respectfully regarded and expected to be uh, included in whatever vision or intentions evolve to the end of the, you know, the, the work. Uh, those conversations that include clarity of purpose and intention from parties. And then of course, as I'm leading to the opportunity for synergy among those. And so in that, it's just one step deeper into it. Through a diverse set of voices in our community, which we know exist, and which we know have tremendous legitimacy in their own personal narratives, multi-generationally often, uh, it's really important to see where the people, where we all will fall in this spectrum between our individual interests and quite narrowly defined individual uh, views and how we are able to transform into those broader, more self-interested or self-enlightened self uh, community interests. And through that, and I'm gonna go directly to the conversation piece again, structuring the conversation in regard to whether it is a debate in which we try to protect our own position or whether it's a dialogue through which we start to share understandings and then emerge to something like a generative or a co-creative conversation through which diverse voices find themselves aligned through a belief in working towards something that they all share together. Uh, that depends on the structure of the conversation. And then the structure of the setting uh, is about what kind of venue or setting can those conversations occur in? And I will only lightly speak to how 
I think the highly charged, quite polarized conversations in our community recently around the conflict mitigation prospect have been unfortunately set up by having the settings of those conversations occur in a pretty high profile public, highly charged places where people believe that, it, that uh, decisions might be immediately or quickly following. Uh, and so it sets up those conversations for being not uh, designed to hear clearly what other people are, are saying and to share and to respect and to move toward uh, quieter and more thoughtful kinds of sharings and, uh, and affirmations of the way people are actually feeling about things. And I say that on a quick side note, as a landowner, longtime landowner, uh, participant in the agricultural community, dear friends uh, in the long standing agricultural community in this county, uh, many of those folks who are standing on the uh, less enthusiastic side of the conflict mitigation conversation have seen tremendous change in this county since their parents or grandparents came here. They've watched a lot of stuff that they thought was healthy and balanced and working well start to change. And hearing those perspectives, I think that are very, very important in moving through into uh, the constructive uh, synergies that we need to achieve. And with that, I'll get off my little soapbox. I thank you all for, uh, let me see if I can go to the next slide. Thank you all for your, for your incredible work, PCEC. Uh, you do incredible work and I'm glad to be a part of it. Uh, eager to participate more and thank you all for listening. Thanks.